October 29, 1929, the world stands at the precipice of one of the most devastating financial collapses in history. Wall Street, the epicenter of global finance, is about to witness a cataclysmic event that will reshape the course of markets for decades to come. Amidst the roar of the approaching storm, a lone figure emerges, a trader whose foresight would elevate him to legendary status. Meet Jesse Livermore, a singular force in the world of finance who would embark on a journey that would redefine the era. Using his own funds, his own system, and not trading with anyone but himself, Livermore executed a short trade that amassed over $100 million, or roughly $1.5 billion in today's dollars. But how did one man, all by himself, achieve such a staggering achievement? Let's rewind the tapes to 10 years prior, right before the greatest boom in American history. Chapter 1. The Roaring Twenties and the Bull Market. It's 1919 and the world is winding down from the biblical events that occurred in the years prior. World War I wiped out roughly 20 million people globally. Immediately after, the Spanish flu ravaged the globe, infecting roughly one-third of the population and resulting in an estimated 50 million people worldwide losing their lives. By 1920, however, the United States was on the verge of an economic boom, with industries thriving, technological advancements emerging, and the stock market reaching new heights. This era witnessed the meteoric rise of the consumer culture. Flapper dresses and jazz defined the spirit of the age. Literary and artistic innovation flourished, with writers like F. Scott Fitzgerald and Ernest Hemingway capturing the essence of the time. The prohibition, intended to ban alcohol consumption, led to the rise of illegal speakeasies, contributing to the rebellious and hedonistic atmosphere. But with Wall Street at its heart, the Roaring Twenties was a period of unbridled economic expansion. Like a rocket reaching for the stars, the stock market propelled the nation into an era of unparalleled wealth and excess. But as the saying goes, what goes up must come down. And Jesse Livermore, with the uncanny ability to read the markets, sensed the fragility beneath the surface. In the pages of history, the euphoria of the bull market is inscribed, setting the stage for the seismic events that would soon unfold. Chapter 2. Livermore's Perception and the Art of Short Selling Born into poverty in 1877, Livermore's exceptional talent for numbers and early fascination with financial newspapers set the stage for his extraordinary journey. At just 14, he was forced to leave school and assist his father in farming, but Livermore's mother secretly supported his runaway to help him pursue his true passion. Landing a job as a chalkboy in a stockbroker's office, he meticulously recorded stock prices, developing an affinity for the market's numerical intricacies. Livermore's entry into trading occurred in bucket shops, where he bought loosely traded stocks and heavily manipulated their price action. His success propelled him to move to New York at the age of 23. His uncanny market sense enabled him to predict volatile market events, like when he shorted Union Pacific Railroad stock the day before the San Francisco earthquake, earning him $250,000. Less than a year later, he earned $1 million in a single day when he made a daring short play during the panic of 1907. In markets, short selling is a financial strategy that bets against a stock, and is often viewed with skepticism. In essence, the process of short selling involves borrowing shares from a brokerage, selling them in the market to generate cash, and later buying back the same number of shares at a lower price. The goal is to profit from the difference between the initial sale price and the lower repurchase price. Short selling does not come without risk, however, as theoretically, if the price of the underlying stock rises, the losses could be unlimited. For Livermore, he used this strategy to his advantage multiple times in his career, but his biggest opportunity just lay ahead. Chapter 3. Black Tuesday and the Unraveling of the Bull Market There is nothing new in Wall Street. There can't be, because speculation is as old as the hills. Whatever happens in the stock market today has happened before, and will happen again. Jesse Livermore. October 29, 1929. Black Tuesday. The stock market, once an unassailable symbol of prosperity, crumbled under the weight of panic selling. As the world watched in awe as fortunes were erased in a matter of hours, Livermore, emerged from the chaos not only unscathed, but enriched by his audacious short positions. Earlier that year, Livermore had noticed similar patterns in the price action that he had observed leading up to the panic of 1907. One of Jesse's most revered trading rules was to go long in a bull market and go short in a bear market. This is exactly what he did. Livermore used over 100 stockbrokers to accumulate his massive short position, never indicating to any of them what he was doing. By October 1929, he netted approximately $100 million, or $1.5 billion in today's dollars. 
He was nicknamed the Great Bear of Wall Street following his trade, and many in the public blamed him for the crash. Soon after, he began to receive death threats and eventually had to hire a bodyguard to protect him. Chapter 4. Jesse Livermore's Legacy Despite numerous successes, Livermore's life was marked by personal and financial challenges. A devastating loss in 1908 and bankruptcy in 1915 demonstrated the highs and lows of his career. Livermore demonstrated remarkable resilience by earning it all back in 1917, but his volatile career was often attributed to the fact that he traded with too much emotion and rarely followed the rules-based approach he developed throughout his life. Unfortunately, after his legendary short play in 1929, he suffered from many personal tragedies. Livermore's infidelity and his wife's drinking habits led to a divorce, and he lost all the money he had made. By 1934, he declared bankruptcy for the third time in his life. The pressure took a toll on Livermore's mental health, and on November 28, 1940, at the age of 63, he tragically took his own life. Livermore's story was a complex narrative of a brilliant trader, marked by financial victories, personal struggles, and a tragic end. His legacy endures, and the lessons from his life continue to shape the understanding of the stock market and his significant advancement toward different trading strategies. Ne Do you believe Jesse Livermore beat the Great Depression, or did his actions cause the Great Depression? Leave your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy this type of content, please do us a favor by sharing this video and subscribing to our channel. Thanks for watching.